Praise the Lord, saints. Welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the Homeless and the Poor here in Montgomery, Alabama. Pastor and founder, Vince Rosado. My name is Minister Warren Rudd. I'm a licensed minister by my bishop, Jimmy A. Ellis III, out of Victory Christian Center of Philadelphia in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tonight's sermon is going to be on the power of unity. You know, God loves unity amongst his brothers and sisters, amongst his sons and daughters. But there are certain people who want to come in and disrupt unity. So we're going to talk about that tail bearer and that gossiper and that negative person. Person and those people who are in sexual sin. We got a lot of things to cover tonight. So as I always tell you, get your Bible, get your pad, and get your pen, and get ready for a mighty word from God. And as I always say, there you go, right there. Mm-hmm. God bless. All right, let's everybody stand for reading God's word. says this, these six things do the Lord hate, yes, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that defies its wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that sows discord <laughs> amongst the brother, and he that has no unity or stops unity amongst the brothers. Tonight's sermon is going to be on the power of unity. Father, I just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for the word is about ready to come forth. Let me be edified. Let your word come forth to build, establish, convict, and cause of repentance, of confession, and bring a heart of unity with amongst the men and amongst the women of God. I ask these things in Jesus' name I pray. Let God say amen. 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 And the seventh is the abomination. In verse 19, you will see that it says, A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that sow discord among the brother. God hates it when there's no unity. Amen. God can't stand it. Now, for a lot of you who just come here and you go back home, you should have unity in your home. Amen? Amen. Especially you married men and you got women, you are supposed to be the, the leader to bring unity in your home. Here in the ministry, there should be unity in the kitchen. There should be unity out here on the floor. There should be unity in the offices. Because any time the devil sends discord amongst you, division begins to happen. Amen. It's time to bring unity. Amen? Amen? Because it doesn't matter whether you like that leader or not. God says, I'm going to bless you because you obey them. Because you might see that as wrong. He says, well, then learn from them. And when God gives you the door open up to make that change, don't talk about it. Go ahead and help the change. Amen. You see something wrong? Don't talk about the wrong. Go help it. You got the answer? Let God exalt you to the point where he'll help you uh, reveal that answer to others. Amen? But let's look at what the Corinthian church has done. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Because this stuff didn't just start. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Amen? Because people always look at the Corinthian church, and most folks will never study the background. A lot of division in churches are based on those letters that Paul wrote. Paul really rebuked them for the way they were acting. They had the vision. You know, that's why Paul told them, don't let women preach, don't do this, don't do that. He was sending a lot of corrections. There was a letter of rebuke. Then he wrote 2 Corinthians because he knew he got so hard on them, he had to restore them. But he rebuked them, then restored them. Amen? But the Corinthian church was, was a mess, man. They were a mess. But I always ask, well, if he wrote a lot of these things that caused divisions in our churches today, how come he didn't write it in every letter? Amen. Why didn't he write it to Galatians? Why didn't he write it to Colossians? Why didn't he write that same thing to the Why didn't he write that to uh, Thessalonians and Philippi? Why didn't he write the same thing? But well, one letter caused a lot of division amongst the denominations. That's why we got so many denominations that women can't preach. There's no more power. There's no more of this. Don't speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Don't lay hand. Lay hand. So all these divisions. When the main thing is that we're just Christians. Amen? But let's look at this. So this thing is not new under the sun. Actually, I wrote this message about 10 years ago. I've been preaching it over 10 years. So, if it don't apply, let it fly. Amen? Eat the meat, spit out the bone. It ain't about you. Amen? Everybody got that? And if it does touch you, maybe you need to repent. Amen. Hello? 
Amen. Amen. Come clean, dirty. Y'all know that's what my favorite saying. So if it does touch you, don't blame me. It's in the word. I decided to bring unadulterated truth to you from God's word. Because that's what I'm anointed to do. Amen. 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 First Corinthians chapter 1. Now let's look at uh, people who are acting, acting in the same manner that they do in the church. Start at verse 10. See you. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. Be in unity. Speak the same thing. Amen. And that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been declared unto me of you, my brother, by them which are of the house of Cleo, that there are contentions. There's a bunch of arguments among you. There's a bunch of divisions among you. Amen. Verse 12. Now this I say, that every one of you said, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos, and I am of Cephas. Cephas is just another name for Peter. Y'all wonder who that is. That's Peter. Okay? And I am of Christ. Let's keep reading. Verse 13. Is Christ divided? Paul's asking the question mark. Is Christ divided? No. Okay. Was Paul crucified for you? No. No, he wasn't. <laughs> or were you baptized in the name of Paul? No. I thank God that I baptized none of you but uh, Cyprus and Caius. Lest any should say that I have baptized in my own name. So you know what the problem was? People would come to church and they would hear Paulus preach. Oh, we love Apollos. Then Paul show up and nobody comes to church. Or Paul would show up and everybody said, Oh, I love Paul. So they were saying who their favorite preacher was. Making division. Amen. Oh man, he preached off the wall. Oh, that one, man, he's so boring. Don't ever speak against the of God that preach. One of the greatest things I ever said this last night, we had a powerful night last night, I preached last night. I didn't know what I was going to do, we just flowing out of the Who was here last night? Amen? Amen. What a problem. You know, we talked about, do you talk about Christ? Amen. I just let them, didn't have nothing, and God just gave it out. Amen. Amen. But we got blessed by it. But here it is, when I see here, there are preachers that come here, hey, I may not agree with them, but I don't run around the room saying I agree with them. I don't preach. Amen. God gave them a job to preach. Who am I to tell them God didn't tell them to do that? It's hard to do this, people. It's hard to stand up here and do this and then it's got to live right in front of you. You know what I'm saying? It is very hard to study in and out. Ask God, God, this you or it ain't you. Amen. Then the next thing you know, you got to deal with people talking about you. It's hard. But let's see what else they said here. So they had their own little perfect choices. Go to chapter 3. Same book. Verse chapter 3. And let's start at verse 1. Let's see what Paul said to them. Chapter 3, starting verse 1. And I, brother, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. See, that's one of the things most people got right now. Y'all just babies. We got to be careful. Amen? Amen? I have fed you with milk and not with meat. There's a lot of times we can't bring the meaty word of God in here. One of the reasons why I can't bring a lot of meat in here is because I will have more contention than I got now. Amen? Amen. And a lot of people come here and say, our job is to show the character of Jesus Christ by feeding you, clothing you, and bedding you. And then feed you spiritual matters. And right now, if I try to give you heavy matters, you won't be able to help. Amen. So I'm giving you the basic milk of the word of God. Because it's simplistic to get born again people. It's something you would get hungry enough to want to meet. Why? Give me, give me, I want that milk no more. Give me something to chew on. Amen. You know? Too many people rest on milk for 20 years and they move. I don't want you to be that way. Amen. All right. Verse 3. For you are yet carnal. Now let me go back up to 2. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hereunto you were not able to bear it. See that? Neither yet now are you able to bear it. Uh, come on. This is Paul, not more. Verse 3. For you are yet carnal. How are you going to handle meat and spiritual things you still in your flesh? For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions. Amen. Are you not carnal and walk as men? Well, one said, I am of Paul. See, here we go here. One said, I like Paul preaching. Mm -hmm. Amen. And another, I like Apollos. Are you not carnal when you do that? <coughs> when you choose who's your favorite teacher, aren't you carnal? <coughs> God can use a baby. He can use 
is a dumbass speaking to the prophet to minister to him. Nothing's impossible with God. He use anybody and anything he wants. Amen. And he's ready to use you. Come on now. The man up here ain't no greater than you. Amen. Verse 4. For while one said, I am a Paul, and another, I am a Apollos, are you not yet carnal? Who then is Paul? Who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believe, even as the Lord gave you to every man. I have planted, pay attention to that, I have planted Apollos water. So you know what he's saying? I can't even give you a word. Then right behind me, you may not receive it or you may not accept it. Uh, accept it. But then here comes the power to pour water on it and something sprouted forth in your soul. Amen. So one preacher come, you may say, oh, he's so important. Then next preacher come right behind him, just as good, probably even the same, but he added to what that preacher says. It's called confirmation, people. <laughs> they confirm. Amen? Amen? Might have been more than you, but next thing you know, the preacher you like said the same thing. Oh, now it's okay. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. I used to deal with that in the church too. I said, you know, hey, brother, I need you to do so and so. I'm a leader, and I told him to do so and so. Well, no, no, no. But if I said, Bishop said, do it, then they jump like a refugee. Why can't you just do it? Because I asked you to do it. You know, same thing around here. Ronnie asked something. Well, I need you to do that. Man, I ain't gonna listen to you. Pastor? Well, Pastor told me to tell you. Oh, okay, we'll do that. Why? Pastor got no more power than that. You only pay him attention because he has the power to throw you out of here. <laughs> Tell the truth, man. <laughs> and he knows it. Ain't nothing. Verse 6. I have planted in Apollos water, but God gave the what? Increase. God gives the increase. Verse 7. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watered, but God that given what? The increase. Amen. Amen. Go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 5. I'm just building a foundation, y'all. 1 Timothy 5. I better make sure I'm in Timothy too. <laughs> okay. Watch this. Because see, one of the hardest things, one of the first things I've learned in ministry, and I said this last night too, was that I used to talk against people who have the same anointing as me. I believe I have an anointing of a teacher. Now I realize I have the apostolic anointing of my life too. But I would talk against teachers. You know, because I was still getting high. still I want to hear that. It was convicting me. But I'm talking to someone. My bishop said, this, son, I'm going to tell you one thing. Whether that teacher's good or bad, you should keep your mouth off of them. You know why? Because they carry the same gift as you. You never speak against nobody who has a gift of you. If you're a carpenter, you don't speak against a carpenter. If you're a painter, you don't speak against another painter. Why? You're going to stop your blessing. Amen. Amen. So you never speak against people that are joined with you. Hello. That drove me out. You're supposed to speak against my Christian brothers. Amen. Amen. Especially when it comes to a leader. Don't you realize anytime you speak against leaders that you come up and go to another leader against a leader, he looks at you and put the microscope on you? Because first of all, you did it incorrectly. All you did was put yourself out there. Hello, I'm a mess. And the leader said, I'm going to keep my eye on you. Amen. So let's see what the scripture says about that. First Timothy 5, 19, what does it say? Against an elder received not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Now that don't mean you see them do something, you're going to tell this sister, and now she's going to believe you and go. Both of y'all have to see that action happen. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the leadership and speak against that leader. Two or three witnesses. But you just go by yourself. Amen. Messed up. Amen. You messed up. Your word will fall to the ground. Be a man and go to that leader and tell him, this is how I feel. Amen? There are certain people here that have that type of integrity. And I go to them and ask them, can I, see, I don't just speak out people. Pastor will call you out by name. Amen? You know why? Because the word, Paul called them people who did him wrong out by name, and he called those who did him bless them out by name. I don't do that. I'm just hoping the convicting spirit of the Holy Ghost will hit you because I've been there too. Amen? That you will have a repentant heart. You know, people with integrity like Brother Robert here came to me. Brother Charles who's not here, he came to me. You know, I don't like him. Brother uh, Lamar came to me. Brother, can I talk to you? See, they brought it to me. And you know what they did? Borders Coast. And it cost forgiveness. Amen. Because I heard their heart. 
You know why? Because they have integrity. Ain't nothing wrong with you telling somebody, look, man, I don't like you, but, you know, forgive me for that, man. You know, I'm trying to help. You know, please. But stand around and bad mouth them to others, mm -hmm. you're wrong. <laughs> you're just wrong. The microscope will hit you, and the curse of God is going to fall on you. Amen. Especially if it's against a leader who's doing spiritual things. A spiritual leader never speaks against whether you like it or not. They just get up and leave, but don't talk against them. I don't like a lot of preaching that goes on. Well, guess what I don't do? I don't put, turn them on. I turn them off. They but I don't speak against them. They Let's go to Matthew 12. I know y'all wonder when we're going to get to the unity scripture. Just come. I just need to set a foundation first in you. I want everybody to be walking in unity. I want everybody to be walking in forgiveness. It's easy. I'm a man of God and mature. I hurt too. But if you come to me as a man or woman and ask for total forgiveness, guess what I got to do? I got to give it. And I'm going to love you. Amen? Amen. Just that simple. Matthew chapter 12. We covered a lot of scripture last night that was just falling out by the Spirit. Dealing with sound doctrine. Dealing with how you talk to Jesus. Do you talk to Jesus? Dealing with the uh, Romans road. Oh, boy, we were just hitting it last night. I listened to the tape and found it was wonderful. I was like, boy, all that stuff's coming out. I hope y'all got blessed by that. I hope you use it. Amen. Amen. Matthew 12, look at verse 36. This is just going to make it simple and easy. What does it say? Jesus is speaking. But I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. I guess I ain't got to say nothing. I guess that's the thing. Every idle word you say, you got to give an account for. Because you know who remembers every word that every human being on this earth? Hello. He's the silent listener to every conversation. He knows what you're doing. In private, he knows your secret message. He knows everything you do in the dark. Because he's a God of light. And he's going to rip that cover off you. Stop being a slugger. Stop being a tech player. Matter of fact, I'm jumping ahead of myself. You won't get me in a minute. All right. Let's look at this. The power of God is released when there is unity. Who wants the power of God to be left? Amen. Then unify with people. And God begins to bless you because of the unity. Go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Starting at verse 43. What does it say? It says, And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the what? The apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things in common. They were together and had all things in common. Amen. Amen. They were unified. Amen. Amen. Whatever struggle you was going through, they bared it with you. Amen. Come on, y'all. Go to Acts 4. <coughs> Those people don't want to bear nobody else's stuff. But you ain't a real Christian if you ain't for bearing your brother's pain. Your brother's hurting, you can be crying with them. Amen? You wait till you see that that spirit is touching you, and then, you know, don't rest right away. That ain't scripture. You wait till the situation comes. Then you go to your brother. Or let your brother come to you. Amen? Amen. But making him sit, feel like he's guilty and that he done did everything wrong, that ain't Christianity. That's self-motive. You're actually happy he's hurting. Kind of Christian are you, man? Restore him. And hopefully I'm going to restore you to that. I'm not here to beat you up. I'm hoping that the Spirit of God will tell you the truth in your spirit. And you wake up, if you've got issues with anybody, family member, friend, people in here, get it together. Get unified so the devil will lose. But as long as you stay in that unchanging condition, the devil will win. Because the only one who has to, who doesn't change is Jesus. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if you're not changing, you ain't a Christian. Because he requires you to change every day. You're acting corruptible flesh, people. You gotta change. You gotta change. How you wanna grow? If you don't change. 
If your job gets a new machine, you have to go learn it. Call a tech. When they move from a stick shift car to an automatic, you have to change. That's right. When they move from outhouses to in-houses, you have to change. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Who was I talking to when I told him, I said, uh, and it's funny, the most insignificant thing that we don't think of, and if we didn't have it, it would drive us crazy. You know what that insignificant thing was? Toilet paper. <laughs> Toilet paper. If you don't think about it till you need it. How many of you ever been without it? Great. Hello. Toilet paper is And 
And it says, in death.